Well, welcome everyone. We are so glad you are here. It is the moments before the Facebook live broadcast for morning prayer. If you are watching on YouTube, please consider liking, subscribing, and uh, and sharing the link with others. Also hit the bell to get notifications uh, when we do post content on our channel, which is pretty much almost every single day. So we're very honored to be able to uh, offer that up to you. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna tell a story. So I, I, you know, social media is an amazing thing. I had a a buddy from college um, post photos of my ordination, um, my ordination uh, bulletins from my deacon and priestly ordinations. He found them in a box somewhere in his stuff, and posted photos of that. So Ron, my old friend from from college, one of my oldest friends. Um, surprised me yesterday and I, I got I got that little trip down memory lane so a, that was a nice reminder so the day I was ordained deacon was the same day as the Bronco chase with OJ Simpson was that the day that was super hot was that your um priestly ordination they were both extraordinarily hot um the the one the, the the diaconal one it was 90 something degrees as we walked from the hotel to the cathedral in cincinnati um 90, 94 95 and then inside the church it was over 100 degrees with the heat index um, when i was ordained a priest so that's 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 the ontological change story where god turned on the air conditioner and 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 um, proved both my friend Randy and I wrong about the arguments that we had of whether there was ontological change, whether you were changed in your very being when you were ordained, so, which is another story for another day. But uh, but yeah, Ron posted those. Quite 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 a memory. It's also a testimony to how long I've been ordained that the guy I was ordained deacon with is 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 retired several years now. <laughs> <laughs> So, all right, we are live on Facebook, and a huge shout out to Philip College, who was my who was my my buddy deacon back in the day, and uh, great love to him. He was actually for a very short time before his retirement my parents' rector in Columbus, Ohio, because the Episcopal Church is just that big and far reaching. <laughs> Today is the feast of Saint Agnes and Saint Cecilia. Um, you see them pictured here with Saint Bartholomew. Um, it's the Bartholomew altar. Um, I can't remember what cathedral it is, but uh, these are two women who, uh, because of the nature of their martyrdom or the state of their martyrdom, are brought together in our new calendar. Um, St. Cecilia and St. Agnes were both remembered as virgin martyrs. However, they were very different. St. Agnes, um, several, about a century before St. Cecilia, was um, martyred and uh, during the Oh, I just lost the Diocletian, I think, um, uh, Emperor, uh, the Imper Diocletian Imperial um, suppression of the of the uh, of the ca of the Christian Church. Um, she was a convert who um, w wanted to live a life of chastity, but she was also a highborn Roman woman of great beauty and had many suitors several of whom denounced her to the Roman governor. She was then uh, by sentence, and this is a horrible way they did this, she was dragged naked through the streets um, to a brothel where she was to be raped, because that's what they did to reluctant virgins in those days. Um, according to the stories, uh, her hair grew long to cover her nakedness, and when uh, men went in to, uh, to have her, they were struck blind. In fact, her, her main suitor and accuser was struck dead. Um, she was then sentenced to execution um, and beheaded. Her remains were then interred and actually a church was built over her tomb um, after several of her relatives prayed uh, at, her, at her tomb side and received miracles, um, including, I think, believe Constantine's daughter who was struck with leprosy got a cure. So she was an early martyr and early saint. She's always depicted with two lambs because there is a, a monastery that keeps lambs that are uh, that are dedicated and blessed to her name by the Pope. And then um, when those lambs are shorn on her feast day, the wool is carded and woven into the pallium, which the Pope awards to the Archbishop's Metropolitan that he appoints that year. St. Cecilia is considered the patron of musicians. 
Um, she was uh, betrothed and was to be wed, but again, felt a call to chastity and celibacy. Her husband, um, she made promise not to, um, not to have relations with her until after he had been baptized by the Pope. He was, um, and, in, and in that uh, bore witness to the angel that stood over her guarding her chastity and thereby um, decided not to do that. Um, at her wedding, she sang silently hymns to God in her heart. So she's uh, seen as the patron saint of church musicians. Um, so you see her often depicted with um, some ancient form of musical instrument. In this case, it is a primitive pipe organ. Um, one of the things that's interesting about St. Cecilia is that um, her, uh, her remains are interred um, and uh, the chapel that was built over her uh, I think it was over her birthplace, which is which is her, her home, was uh, at her request upon her death. So both of whom were martyred, um, both of whom were in some way beheaded. There you have it. These two these two women who share uh, similarities only in that they refuse to surrender their chastity to um, to a patriarchy. What a great way to start the day. All right, well, welcome all. If you are watching on Facebook, please do let us know your uh, prayer intentions. We're happy to offer those up. Um, please do that in the comments. If you uh, haven't already, please start a watch party with your friends. It's a great way to share on social media your witness to Christ. And uh, we're glad you're here today. Morning prayer. Send out your light and your truth that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. My brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life, amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. God is the rock of our salvation. O come, let us worship. Sorry, please join me in the antiphon and invitatory in unison. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. God is the rock of our salvation. O come, let us worship. Psalm 37, the first portion. I'll offer the odd. You guys will respond with the even. Do not fret because of the wicked. Do not be envious of wrongdoers. For they will soon fade like the grass and wither and like, the wither green like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good, so you will live in the land and enjoy security. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, and he will act. He will make your vindication shine like the light and the justice of your cause like the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret over those who prosper in their way, over those who carry out evil devices. Refrain from evil, from anger, and forsake wrath. Do not fret, it leads only to evil. For the wicked shall be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. Yet a little while, and the wicked will be no more. Though you look diligently for their place, they will not be there. But the meek shall inherit the land, and delight themselves in abundant prosperity. The wicked plot against the righteous and gnash their teeth at them. But the Lord laughs at the wicked, for he sees that their day is coming. The wicked draw the sword and bend their bows to bring down the poor and needy, to kill those who walk uprightly. Their sword shall enter their own heart, and their bows shall be broken. 
Better is a little that the righteous person has than the abundance of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, the Lord upholds the righteous. The Lord knows the days of the blameless, and their heritage will abide forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. I am the Lord and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I arm you though you do not know me so that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is no one besides me. I am the Lord and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make weal and create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. Shower, O heavens, from above, and let the skies rain down righteousness. Let the earth open, that salvation may spring up, and let it cause righteousness to sprout up also. I, the Lord, have created it. Woe to you who strive with your maker, earthen vessels, <clears throat> pardon me, earthen vessels with the potter. Does the clay say to the one who fashions it, what are you making? or your work has no handles. Woe to anyone who says to a father, what are you begetting? Or to a woman, with what are you in labor? Thus says the Lord, the Holy One of Israel and its maker. Will you question me about my children or command me concerning the work of my hands? I made the earth and created humankind upon it. It was my hands that stretched out the heavens and I commanded all their host. I have aroused Cyrus in righteousness, and I will make all his paths straight. He shall build my city and set my exiles free, not for price or reward, says the Lord of hosts. Thus says the Lord, the wealth of Egypt and the merchandise of Ethiopia and the Sabaeans tall of stature shall come over you and be yours. They shall follow you. They shall come over in chains and bow down to you. They will make supplication to you saying, God is with you alone and there is no other. There is no God beside him. Truly, you are a God who hides himself, O God of Israel, the Savior. All of them are put to shame and confounded. The makers of idols go in confusion together. But Israel is saved by the Lord with everlasting salvation. You shall not be put to shame or confounded to all eternity. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our first canticle this morning, the song of Zechariah in unison. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty savior, born of the house of his servant, David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit as you sing, as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to, the, to God the Father of all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Be su but be subject to one another over the reverence for Christ. Wives, be subject to your husbands as you are to the Lord. 
where the husband is the head of the wife, just as Christ is the head of the church, the body of which he is the Savior. Just as the church is subject to Christ, so also wives ought to be in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her in order to make her holy by cleansing her with the washing of water by the word, so as to present the church to himself in splendor without a spot or wrinkle or anything of the kind, yes, so that she may be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as they do their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hates his own body, but he nourishes and tenders, tenderly cares for it, just as Christ does for the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a great mystery, and I am applying it to church and the Christ in the church. Each of you, however, should leave, should love his wife as himself, and a wife should respect her husband. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second canticle this morning, the Gloria, together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, for the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Heaven uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. Where we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Almighty and everlasting God, who chooses those whom the world deems powerless to put the powerful to shame, grant us so to cherish the memory of your youthful martyrs, Agnes and Cecilia, that we might share their pure and steadfast faith in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O oh God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you as eternal life and to serve you as perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers, which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join me in a prayer attributed to St. Francis. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. 
Amen. I invite your prayers of intercession and thanksgiving. We pray for Amy and her family, for Ralph's continued recovery. We pray for all those who know loss or anxiety or fear or worry, who struggle with illness. We pray for all those who are struggling with health, with issues that are unrelated to the pandemic, but are still challenging all the same and should not be forgotten. Grant, O oh God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart, and especially the hearts of the people of this land, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatreds cease, that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join me in the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we your unworthy servants give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you, and you have promised to your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. All right, folks, uh, this is uh, a semi-busy day for us here in the office. We have uh, wardens and rectors coming up at 10. There is a clergy town hall at 11. Of course, you can keep your eye open for the e-news. There will be a new rector's blog, as well as a new blog post coming up on new ministry and new paths. And then we will reconvene to close the worship week at 5 p.m. with evening prayer. So God bless you all. And thank you for being with us. Um, if you are watching on YouTube, again, I'll remind you, like, subscribe, and hit the bell button so that you can uh, get notifications of more content coming online. Thank you so much. We will see you later. Bye-bye. Good tonight.